Welcome to Gluten Dairy and welcome to the unboxing of the Starlink Mini. As I had the first post about this uh, like almost half a year ago and actually almost 700 people voted for they definitely want to have a couple of videos about the, about the Starlink. Uh, some people said unboxing, some people said like tested by an engineer and some people uh, wanted a one year review like real life use and so on. So I finally got around to order one and take the time to do the videos. So that's the first one. A second one will come then soon. And then obviously after maybe half a year uh, or maybe one year, the, the, like the review in the long term, on a long term perspective. So let's get into it. Here we go, looks already quite, quite cool. I'm already positively surprised about the small package. Um, always nice to see companies optimizing packaging. And even here the quick setup guide, it looks like printed on the cardboard itself. Cool approach, all cardboard, no plastic packaging. Um, so pretty cool to see that. And yeah, in case you're wondering why, what is the real background noise, I'm literally next to a lake, so don't get confused. So it's really easy packaging. You just take this off and you have access to all the parts. So this looks like the stand in the lower right corner, the power supply on the top, and then obviously the Starlink dish. And as promised, it's the size of a pizza box or even like a small pizza. So I opted for the mini instead of the standard because the standard is actually, uh, I think a little bit too big for most of the carry-on uh, luggages. So this mini is easily fitting like in, not, not even in a carry-on luggage, even in your normal backpack or daily backpack or whatever. So I think for traveling and getting it to wherever you are, it's quite nice. Or even on a hike or whatever, uh, when you hike to somewhere and you want to stay there for a while, I mean, maybe you want to be disconnected, but maybe you appreciate having some connection. So that's, I guess, quite convenient. First thing to spot is that this is not a USB-C cable whatsoever. So that's thereby um, unique to the Starlink, uh, which is a bit unfortunate, but as far as I saw it, I think the Starlink itself is operating on 18 volts or something. Um, no, actually it's 12.48 volt, it says on the dish, which is kind of possible to provide by USB-C, uh, not by all USB-C, but I mean, uh, the USB standard is providing. A 12 volt level and i mean i don't know if you need the 4.48 um so yeah would be cool to be able to supply it with usb type c so you could then yeah provide it with a big power bank or something that is capable of 12 volt output or even a, a car lighter i think there's a car yeah car cable a car connector um cigarette lighter connector available as an accessory but yeah i mean i have a plenty of like power stations or power banks that i could plug in there um, so yeah, having the need to buy some adapter cable or whatever is, is always not super cool. But anyway, let's get it out of here positively. But by the way, the shape, I mean, I really like the shape of the, of the brick of the wall connector, the little power supply here. It's like super tight edges, which is by the way, super difficult to uh, manufacture in injection molding. So that's uh, kind of cool, but let's get it out of there get the starting dish for a little paper protected and uh, cable and um, that's pretty cool you get a pretty long cable i will give you the exact uh, length in a minute but that's pretty decent because obviously you're not always having the having the possibility to have it close to a to wall outlet so that's it that's the unboxing pretty short video i assume so yeah just peel off the plastic sheet even a little nice um, orbit picture there and yeah that's your starling dish um, i just uh, also realized there's apart from the dish itself and the cable which by the way came comes with some nice um, yeah zip tie type of uh, like reusable zip ties um, only regularly notice uh, is in there and that's it so obviously the, the brick the dish itself which needs no not anything to be assembled to it it's just like you can just put it like this on the floor and obviously this um, holder here, which is to mount it on, um, as you can see, you to mount it on a tower 
or like some some sort of, of pillar or something which uh, definitely makes sense if you're in a permanent setup or even like on a mobile setup on a van or something to have some pillar there or a 3d printed part i guess that's what i'm gonna do you uh, can easily um, hook it up to um, i'm sure there are plenty of designs available um, but always like to make my, my own unique one so that seems uh, like a pretty basic but kit but also everything you need again the long cable with the re uh, reusable zip ties in case you don't need a full length i guess it's time to to plug it in so coming back to the power supply, it's pretty strange because the dish definitely says, I hope you can see that, uh, input 12 point, oh, no, sorry, it's not 12.48, it's 12 to 48 volts. Uh, even though the power brick, and that's the one that I uh, yeah, got my orientation from, from the website, is saying 30 volts. And um, so 30 volts at 2 amps at 60 watts, uh, or equals 60 watts. So obviously if you go down to 12 volts, you would need, um, at least like four to five uh, amps to match the power and amount of 60 watts uh, or the maximum power demands which is no problem with a 12 volt one um, it's cool that it has this wide um, that it has this wide power range uh, voltage range from 12 to 48 um, volts but um, yeah then i don't really see why they're going with a with a 30 volt brick i mean sure the cable can be thinner um, but i mean yeah, it's still uh, in any case a relatively small uh, current, um, but definitely then I will get myself a 12 volt one ready because, as you know, maybe from my other videos, I built or in the prime in the process of building this power station uh, myself, which is already providing 12 volt output and then also 230, but obviously inverter efficiency and so on. 12 volt directly is more decent, or 24 volt could be also an option on so or 36 so that's all possible from an acceptance point of view of the dish itself according to what's written here um, but yeah i will make sure to research a little bit more if that's all possible if you know anything let me know in the comments so that's the connector it's quite nice it has a, like a ceiling included to make a water watertight seal or like, at least like a um, like yeah like a rainproof uh, seal and so I assume you can use it outdoors, like not completely outdoors, but I'm like on a protected area outdoors. Let me quickly plug this in. Yeah, that's it. And yeah, let's take it from there, hook it up and give it a try. So one thing I didn't mention yet, um, here's just, there was a little plug inside that's covering this Ethernet uh, connector here, the RJ45 um, connector. So you can output Ethernet right from the dish, which is quite convenient because the downside, let's say, of the Mini is that the Wi-Fi uh, router is right inside the dish. So if the dish is far away from you or like on a pole, maybe nice for um, yeah, the reception on your on your land. But if you're in a building or whatever and the dish is away, not so nice. So with the Ethernet output, you can just hook it up to a to Ethernet cable and then have another router somewhere in in your house a repeater basically so that's cool even though to get the plug out of here is like a real pain in the ass um i mean look at this plug but it's like with this little shape there you can really barely reach it so this could be definitely better but it's the only downside i found so far so that's how it looks once assembled um it's pretty basic assembly just plugging in the cable really plug and play so next up, we need to uh, align the Starlink to the satellites. Um, so I will switch the video to the screen recording um, so you can follow in the app what's going on. Um, but so far, so easy. I am, as mentioned before, outside on the balcony to make sure that I have good uh, visible si line of sight to the sky, to space, actually. All right, welcome to the setup. To get started with, uh, first of all, sorry that my app is in German, uh, kind of auto auto pulled the language um, yeah you get quickly a setup and log in with your credentials i skipped this part and then you select your hardware in my case the mini as you know and from there on it's kind of about like scanning the sky to check if there are any obstacles or you can just say okay i have a, a, a free a line of sight to the sky and yeah it's just recommending you a bunch of stuff how to do it and eventually you're just supposed to plug in the power supply and then connect to the Starlink. That's uh, what I did here. And from here on, it got a bit 
difficult um, not as plug and play as you expect i'm actually fast forwarding here a couple of minutes like it's like was one minute time lapse or something just loading and nothing happened then it was not connected anymore to the starlink so i went back to the wi-fi settings had to reselect the starlink uh, wi-fi to to proceed i don't know why it lost the connection uh, exactly and it was all very yeah laggy and and yeah i don't know what what was wrong here um eventually again it asked me to connect to the to the wi-fi but then it finally worked and came up and again that's a time lapse of uh, i think two minutes or something where it was just like kind of calculating the uh, um the alignment but then you can see at the at the bottom it came up that it's doing a software update so while it was calculating the alignment so this was a bit strange for me how can you already update the software with only via Starlink when you not even have the alignment done. Um, so I don't know, that seems a bit weird. Um, eventually I got here like some nice stats and it was online. Uh, you see the, the power consumption of 22 watts uh, in average, which I think is quite good, especially if you think about battery or solar powered setups. But here the download speed you can see and the ping, uh, the ping rate at the top, like only 30% of the pings been successful. And you can see a little history of like all the times it like popped off uh, for a couple of seconds or even minutes. So obviously the alignment was wrong, um, but till this point it was still telling me that it's still calculating the alignment. So it wasn't giving me any like suggestions how to realign until I eventually found this menu, which was working even though it told me that it's still calculating the alignment. So that's strange. Nevertheless, this was helpful. And you can just then turn the um, dish until it's uh, in a better alignment. But again, it was still saying it's uh, calculating the alignment. Um, so this whole process went on for like 10, 15 minutes um, until then I found out that I can scan the sky. Again, with just a ton of time limbs. Um And then, uh, yeah. So first of all, I adjusted it until I'm in the little square and then it was actually lighting up. Um, and from this perspective, a little difficult to see, but I will show in a, in a minute how you can turn this around to, to have it more easily because it's not just a... Uh, alignment um, on the on the on the northeast axis and so on. It's also um, on the angle on the pitch that needs to be um, done. So now I scanned my environment with the camera. Um, I skipped this part and then you s I got this weird picture. So it's basically saying that, like head on, um, looking up, I have an obstacle uh, with a lot of the red part with a lot of uh, obstacles, which is totally not true. Um, just to be clear, like I, behind me is a wall that where, where this, there was blue um, and in front of me there was just sky. So that was weird. Um, but nevertheless, um, again, that was not really helpful. <laughs> um, nevertheless, there's another cool feature that are showing here is that you can heat the dish automatically to melt snow. That's cool. Um, but yeah, uh, I was just playing around until um, then this alignment calculation or actually after reboot was done and now you can see you can turn this and now it was showing me that it was actually still misaligned. So maybe that was just a first time thing. Um, and then eventually I could now align as you can see here, I'm turning now in real time basically the, the dish until I'm in the little square and then you can even perfect it a little more. It's really precise to do this. And eventually I was up and running, but still very slow. And then I did this very cool uh, extended uh, analysis. And that actually turned then out that the Starlink was quite well after this whole alignment struggle, well aligned and getting 150 Mbit, as you can see here, even though with not, again, a wall was behind me, so it was not perfectly fine. But the Wi-Fi connection itself was really bad. The Wi-Fi connection itself was only at three Mbits. That's because I was a little bit too far away from it. But honestly, <laughs> my distance at this point was uh, like from the dish, like the dish was on the ground, I was on the ground floor, like there was your huge windows and I was, let's say 10 meters line of sight away from the Starlink. And um, there was kind of a little wall that could uh, create a little like shade of, of, the, of the radio signals, but um, the Wi-Fi signals, but still, um, I was really close and really big windows and it was not working very well. So the Wi-Fi is fine as long as you are very close and there's no wall whatsoever be between you. Um, but apart from this, it could be really stronger. Also, obviously, you put it on the ground that it has a stable position and that's already sh obviously shielding your Wi-Fi signals. So if you have any possibility, it helps to put it somewhere on a, on a chair or something just to give it a little bit of better uh, distribution of the signal. 
since I made this video, um, I had, or like I, I did the unboxing, I had already a couple of tests on uh, three different locations now. And I have already s some negative points that I don't want to go too much into detail in this video. But there are definitely struggles. Um, for one, it's like it's not just like you point it at the sky and it's working, you just uh, align it a little bit. Actually, I had now twice a situation where behind me was a wall and I was supposed to f uh, face it to the wall and I had no option to like reposition or something. So that's really, really um, not useful because I mean, especially in a city or something, you can't just like go to the other side of the building. That's maybe not your apartment anymore whatsoever. So that's really not cool. Uh, but what I have to say is that the setup from um, since now was really easy. Like really just plug in, you pop up the app, you align it according to this nice uh, graphic that you saw earlier. And there you go. It's really good. It's really quick. Like it's under a minute to pop it in to the socket, align it. And there you go. You have Wi-Fi and fast internet. That's cool. But um, definitely there are some like those um, those interruptions that you lose the ping and that's really annoying in a video call or something that is obviously correlating with the type of like like if there are any obstacles in your view but again you're kind of limited sometimes that if you have to align it towards the wall or something so it's a bit um yeah not not really perfect from what i can feel now maybe it's also a thing of the mini because a smaller dish but nevertheless for so far nice unboxing experience nice product nice app in general popping it in and, and getting it up and running on a daily basis is very easy. The first time it was really a tedious process, like really like 15, 20 minutes. And it was not really telling me that uh, which way I have to realign and telling me it's still calculating this for like 20, 15 or 20 minutes until I eventually then uh, had it uh, aligned in the right way or yeah so that that was that was weird but um since then it's r really working very nice yeah. so that's all for this video i hope you liked it um from a little uh, first hand experience it's also for me the first time with starlink and i will make sure to create a video very soon about all the pros and cons but so far that's what you can expect once you order a starlink mini thanks for watching and see you next time and make sure to be subscribed if you want to follow up what how it's going with the starlink